The Art Gallery of New South Wales has received hundreds of entries for this year's Archibald Prize. One of them is a self-portrait, painted in custody. The self-portrait is a very powerful statement of Malcolm's sadness and tragedy of his life. It's a striking painting, but so much of the story really depends on understanding the context of Malcolm. To interpret that emotion, you need someone to tell you his life story. I don't think there is a more dehumanised man in Australia. The artist is Malcolm Morton, a 32-year-old Arundel man from Central Australia. He has an acquired brain injury and an intellectual disability. So this is me and my mate Malcolm Morton. Say hello, Malcolm. Disability rights advocate Patrick McGee has known him since he was a child. Yeah, we're, we're best mates. I first met Malcolm in the year 2000 when I came to work with him on his community outside of Alice Springs. Um, he was nine years old at the time and um, the work I was doing was to help manage his behaviours. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. And um, then when, he, when the incident occurred on community for which he was indefinitely detained, I came back into his life. In 2007, when Malcolm was 16, he fatally stabbed his uncle. He was found not fit to plead and has been detained ever since. In juvenile detention, he was put into solitary confinement 223 days over two years. In the adult prison, he would bang his head on the wall because he was in that cell for 10 out of every 12 hours. They would come in, they would pick him up and they would tie him down into a restraint chair and they would inject him with tranquilizers until he was unconscious. NT Correctional Services told 730 it did not comment on individual prisoners. Despite never having been convicted, Malcolm spent eight years in the Alice Springs Correctional Centre, a maximum security jail. A complaint was made to the Australian Human Rights Commission in 2014 about this. And the Australian Human Rights Commission found that Malcolm was being arbitrarily detained and was being subjected to cruel, degrading and inhumane treatment. In 2018, Malcolm was moved to the Forensic Disability Unit next door. He's now allowed out for several hours a day. But his aunt, Margaret Campbell, says he remains isolated in the unit. The NT Department of Health confirmed only one staff member speaks Aranda. <laughs> Uh, Auntie Margaret says Malcolm should be released so he can spend more time on country where his grandmother first taught him to paint. Artist and disability worker Al Bethune helped Malcolm resume his art with tins of old house paint. We'd just splash paint, play with it any way we could. Big brushes, bold brush strokes, trying to engage him, get him excited. I believe he ended up finding peace through the painting process, became meditative. Many of the paintings made their way to Victoria last year for an exhibition at the Australian Catholic University. The university's Dean of Law, Patrick Kayser, represents Malcolm and says his indefinite detention is unjustifiable. He's either been in prison or in detention in the Forensic Disability Unit for um, upwards of 16 years, uh, which is a longer period of time uh, in detention than he would have been if he'd been found guilty. Um, and, and sentenced. In January, Professor Kayser lodged a complaint with the United Nations Committee Against Torture. 
Malcolm's indefinite detention in a forensic disability unit is a breach of Australia's international human rights obligations under a number of treaties and under a number of provisions. Australia's signature uh, on these treaties, it, it's not worth the paper that it's printed on. Last year, an independent forensic psychologist found Malcolm posed a risk of violent offending in the future. But the report also found Malcolm's behaviour improved after spending more time in the community, and that a transition from custody was of the utmost importance. He is lonely. And, you know, when you're lonely and frustrated and, and restricted as a young person, what do you do? Well, you behave badly. Show him some respect as a human being. Give him another chance. He suffered enough. Malcolm's family and friends say he should be allowed to live on the outskirts of town under the close supervision of NDIS support workers. <laughs> It's time for Malcolm to live safely and securely in the community, uh, in his own house, surrounded by family and friends and people who love him. It's time to do things a different way. The Northern Territory's Health Minister, Chief Minister Natasha Files, declined to answer questions about Malcolm's treatment and whether the government would oppose his release. In a statement, a spokesperson said, the assessment of the custody of people detained under Part 2A of the Criminal Code is a matter for the Supreme Court. The next review of Malcolm's custody order is before the Supreme Court next month. In the meantime, there will be a verdict from other judges, those presiding over the Archibald. Ah, oh, it's exciting! That painting sings. If somehow through that entry, Malcolm's life improves, you know, it's an opportunity. And I wish him all the luck in the world. <laughs>